Joining me this morning, Pix Love and political reporters, Ayanna Harry and Henry Rossoff, and from the city, Katie Honan. So good to have all three of you here. Good morning. Let's begin with this big news. Mayor Adams declaring a state of emergency over the influx of asylum seekers coming to the city, going as far to say that we would surpass the highest number of people in recorded history in our city's shelter system. Katie, you were there at the press conference saying it's going to cost over a billion dollars. What's the plan? What the mayor is asking for is more relief from the federal government, financial relief. He talked about um, the state of emergency. He listed in an emergency order. One of the issues would be changing land use things. He didn't go into more details about that. But the issue here is obviously the influx of people. He says it's a human caused crisis. People come in and he just needs more money from the federal government to house people and to continue to welcome them as the city has been doing. And Dana, I will say this was a major policy speech for the mayor. Uh, over the last few weeks, we've learned about details of how the city is handling these new migrants through, you know, press conference question and answering here and there. But this is a moment where the mayor was able to stop, sort of set the record straight in terms of where his administration is and how they plan to move forward. So I do think that was very valuable. But as Katie mentioned, there were a lot of questions still left unanswered. And Diana, it's a daunting. I apologize, but it's a daunting task, as you mentioned. The mayor did need this reset. We are about to exceed our shelter capacity, over 61,000. A third of those are children. A, th a fifth of those are migrants. So this is not an easy task. But he's doubling down on these tent encampments. He calls them emergency relief centers. Highly controversial. The city council doesn't like it. And even the mayor admits it will only give the city a few days' worth of relief at this pace. Yeah. So, you know, let me ask you this, though, because he actually went as far as saying to El Paso, hey, stop sending migrants here. So, Katie, you were there. Any word if he's actually heard from Texas if they'll oblige? Nothing from that end. He said he's spoken to President Biden, or at least to the to, to the White House, about the relief that they need. I mean, you, Henry, you mentioned the city council. One thing the mayor did say was earlier this week the city council issued a statement saying that they oppose this plan with intense. They encourage the city to house migrants in hotels. The mayor challenged reporters to get that list of available hotels from the city council. It was a little bit of, I guess, cattiness on his part for what he has said is this is a crisis and people who are critical of it, they need to come up with better solutions with actual tangible plans they want to criticize. Mm -hmm. And Dan, I will mention when I was on Randall's Island, we were kept a little bit away from where this new encampment is going up. But I will say what we saw coming in were actually trailers and they were marked mobile sleeping units. We also saw trailers brought in that were marked mobile shower units. So it appears this may look more like a sort of trailer park, if you will, as opposed to a tent city. Uh, so a little bit more permanent housing um, as opposed to the tents that we were previously thinking about. But again, we were kept away from seeing exactly what's yeah. going on for the most part. Yeah, we shall see how all that plays out. Really doubling down, too. And he went as far as to say that it wasn't flooding on Orchard Beach, that it was ponding and puddling, and that it was all because of the pressure, right? Uh, I do want to move on, though, and talk about this other big race happening in New York City. It's the race for governor, obviously, right? There's a poll out from the Trafalgar Group, shows Hochul with a marginal lead over Zeldin, 44 to 42 percent. That's essentially a dead heat within the margin of error, right? So, Henry, let me go to you here because you're the numbers guy. Our polls is something different. Is this race really this close? It's not just our polls. It's everyone else's polls, including New York One Siena poll. That they're, they're doing a lot of work in this race as well. We work with Emerson. Everyone else has this as a double-digit lead for Governor Hochul. There are a few red flags in this poll. In fact, the last two polls from Trafalgar would show this very close. First of all, in the Attorney General's race, Lieutenant, uh, uh, excuse me, Attorney General James's opponent, uh, Michael Henry, is polling ahead. That's the, this is the only poll that shows anything like that. This is also a very large sample of white voters, more than 65 percent. Mm -hmm. Now, that's in line with the state numbers, yeah. but generally you don't poll that high of one demographic. And, and Katie, let me go to you here because there's a lot of talk about this debate, right, and, and a debate that maybe will or will not happen. We're going to be doing a forum with both the candidates, but where, where does it stand? Will these candidates hit a stage together? The, my understanding is they both agreed to and we'll see when it happens. And um, right now, I mean, we're, we're in the home stretch for both candidates in terms of what angle they're going to take and, and criticizing their opponents. So obviously there's only one way to see that with an actual debate on the issues. And I think one thing we're also watching in this race, Dan, is voter mobilization. The you know, question is, if Democratic voters think that Kathy Hochul has pretty much won this already, will they still come out and vote? Will Republican voters be more voteabated? Will that, you know, sort of shift the numbers a bit on Election Day? So it's certainly important to, to watch. I will say it doesn't seem, it doesn't feel as if the candidates are out campaigning as hard as we've yeah. seen 
for other elections. So that that voter turnout component will be key. The roller coaster of New York City politics, right, boy? So let's talk about this other big news that came out last week, which is a major blow to gun control advocates. A judge ruled some of the new gun licensing and carry laws are unconstitutional. That appeals are planned, right? This could be a very big fight playing out in the courts. What happens in the meantime, Henry? Well, in the meantime, many of the city's brand new gun regulations are struck down, the most high profile of which was the Times Square blanket ban, although during specific events like outdoor festivals and Times Square New York Eve, uh, the federal judge did leave this in place, but he was deeply skeptical of this law. He was deeply skeptical when he dismissed a lawsuit on procedural grounds a month ago, um, but in schools and churches and the like, you still cannot carry a legal concealed carry permit, but these broad sweeping like businesses by default, you can't have a weapon there, he struck down that sort of language. Okay. All right, we're going to leave it there because we're simply out of time, jam-packed. Katie, good to have you here. Henry, good to see you. And Ayana, congratulations on being a newlywed. Thank you.